Affirmative. By the way, I just found out that she's never, ever, ever getting back together with uh, <laughs> that guy. Never, ever, <laughs> ever. Oh. Hey, Michelle Malcolm right. joins us yeah. from Colorado <laughs> Springs. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, no. I, I, I got a no. news report I had to go with. At least he's not quoting <laughs> Justin Bieber, okay? <laughs> baby, baby, baby. <laughs> Oh, baby, let's talk, Stop. Stop. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Joe Biden. Yesterday, he made some comments. You know, ever since... Uh, You're just transitioning in and out of yourself. <laughs> We're not even doing anything. You're just trying to recover from your beaver comment. I know. Yeah. Michelle, ever since the tragedy up in Connecticut, uh, in Newtown, uh, you know, a lot of people in the administration have been saying, we've got to do something. We've got to have more gun controls. Yesterday, we heard from Sheriff Joe Biden. He sounds like... He wants to have the president use an executive order to do something to clamp down on guns. What do you think about this? Well, if you thought the last four years showed how little disregard this administration has for the deliberative process, you ain't seen nothing yet. And that uh, cheesy grin that uh, Joe Biden just can't wipe off his face, even when he's talking about something as um, dire and as grave and serious as, as this particular issue, I, it, it gives me the chills uh, because uh, that impetus to do something, anything, uh, without the kind of reflection um, that we need on these kind of <clears throat> issues is very dangerous. And th the administrative fiat, the imperial presidency, um, has had as its hallmark the abuse of the executive order. And wherever there's been a major uh, domestic policy issue that is very contentious. This administration has wielded the executive order to rule um, by imperial um, I attitude. just don't know what legally could do. I mean, the judge was out here before. He said maybe you could put a tax on ammunition that way it was more than the actual price of the ammo. Yeah. I mean, could he come just say unilaterally, executive order, no, no more assault weapons? What could he do? Well. Well, you know, why the heck not? I mean, this administration has used the uh, executive order and administrative fiat to uh, completely undermine and sabotage our immigration policy, for example. They've done so many things by executive order on the environment uh, that are radical shifts from where most Americans are. Um, I don't see why anyone would dismiss yeah. Um, you know, the, the kind of extreme measures that people have contemplated in the past. And I think that's what, what, what's most dangerous is the way that they couch their rhetoric in what seems to be moderation. Right now they're talking about gun safety instead of gun control. control. Um, and when they harp about uh, assault weapons or um, ammunition, what they're really talking about, and we have, we have had this kind of candor before from yeah. the gun grabbers, is talking about you know, the kind of handguns that ordinary Americans use to protect themselves. Sure, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what, the, what they're looking at right now, uh, you know, uh, uh, background checks and things like that, that not, not, and, and the fact that uh, they want to have uh, no gun zones around schools, neither one of those would have probably stopped the tragedy in Sandy Hook because the guns did not belong to the shooter. Right. And it was already right. a no gun zone at that school. Uh, we've got a sound bite uh, for everybody to listen to. Here's Bill Clinton and Las Vegas at the Consumer Electronics Show. He now weighing in on guns. I grew up in this honey culture, but this is nuts. Why does anybody need a 30 clip, a 30 round clip for a gun? Why does anybody need one of those things that carries 100 bullets? A guy in Colorado had one of those. Half of all the mass killings in the United States have occurred since the assault weapons ban expired in 2005. Half of all of them in the history of the country. Do there need to be some home guards in some schools where there's a high crime rate and the kids themselves may take weapons to school? Absolutely. But it is not an excuse not to deal with this issue. It's just amazing to me uh, that everybody's focusing on the speed in which the bullets came out of the gun instead of the guy who pulled the trigger and the fact that he had a whole arsenal in his car. It's, it, they're focusing on the assault weapon or the semi-automatic yeah. weapon instead of the three nuts that have perpetrated the worst crimes that we can remember.
Yeah, well, you're making too much sense, Brian, and, and uh, Steve was making too much sense there, too, talking about the futility of, of uh, so many of these regulations that are now being proposed. Oh, and by the way, I'm sure that the Consumer Electronics Show was really appreciative of that uh, gun control <laughs> message. Stem winder yeah. by Fantastic. Bill Clinton. Well, right. and it's because they really should be addressing video game violence, the impact right. on no culture health. and Hollywood and everything else. But it, it no does question. explain, you know, hearing the administration talking about more clamping down on guns, that's one of the reasons why in a lot of places in this country, the guns are flying off the shelves. Right now, they've got a million, what was it? Uh, according to the website, House of Guns, one million AR-15 magazines on back order. People are afraid the government's yes. for their guns. And like you said earlier, the government doesn't want, or these people that own the guns don't want to be told by the government that you can't have your guns. Right. Uh, so the gun debate is raging in this country, and we have no idea what's coming out of the, uh, the pike right directly from the White House. I want to move to another topic now, and it's something that I sure. know you're passionate about. One by one, when the president uh, uh, won an election, we heard about the, the cabinet members, and we heard about the czars that came cascading down. Who are these people, yeah. what do they do, and who's paying them? Where are they now? Yeah. Nancy DeParle Min uh, was somebody that I highlighted in Culture of Corruption. And really, I keep joking that this could be an encyclopedia series. Um, but she came to light um, in, the, in the public eye for this snitch brigade that she had started under her uh, very special White House Office of Health Reform. Uh, remember, they were collecting information about citizens that they believed were spreading false propaganda. And everybody was wondering what the heck they were going to do with that information. And because of the backlash against this snitch brigade idea, that office was closed in 2011. But she's still bouncing around. It yeah. really is dance of the lemons with these people. She's still a top White House advisor. And I think uh, what struck me the most about her was the fact that this was somebody who demonized the health care industry uh, in her offices um, of government. She actually came out of the Clinton administration where she ran the Medicaid and Medicare program. Program, uh, but then turned around and parlayed that public stint into a very lucrative private sector experience. This is a multi-millionaire who has cut lots of backroom deals uh, with the health care sector during the Obamacare debacle. Sure. And goodness knows what these people are doing behind the scenes even now. Well, Definitely she, need more sunlight. She's no longer a czar, as we were categorizing the czars, but we understand she is now currently an assistant to the president and White House uh, deputy chief of staff for policy. And by the way, she's married to a New York Times reporter. That's right. All right, Michelle, All moving world. on to another topic. There is a lawsuit that is accusing an Obama appointee of covering up embezzlement at a major labor union. You want to tell us about this and give us your opinion? Yeah, mm-mm-mm. Here's the culture of corruption again. Uh, this is Richard Griffin, who, by the way, uh, his whole nomination to the NL L NLRB B, blah, 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 was uh, <laughs> steeped in um, corruption and dirty politics because he never had to go through the formal uh, confirmation process, never had to go through background checks. And now there is a lawsuit um, accusing him of uh, embezzlement, uh, conspiracy, um, the, the usual kind of big labor, brass knuckles, dirty politics. Um, it, it, it's, it's rather uh, soap opera dramatics because uh, backed up uh, somebody who was in, involved in one of these embezzlement schemes union. This is petrochemicals and, and pipeline uh, company. And um, I think there are a lot of Republicans on on, uh, on Capitol Hill who object to me in a row, um, uh, who are now saying, I told you. The way you have to describe things, not good for an administration. Yeah. Michelle Malkin, always a pleasure. Have a great week. We'll see you next week out you in bet. Colorado. Bye, Michelle. Thank you. Take care. And go Broncos, right? Bye. Yeah. Uh, absolutely.